Well, earlier today, I posted in the community tab about how you have not heard no prayers for the Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio from none of the Christian YouTubers, but they want to continue to have prayers for Donald Trump, as you will see here. So as we go out into this world, let's remember that our political engagement should always reflect Christ's love. We have the opportunity to bring healing where there's hurt, to speak peace where there's conflict, and to show grace where there's anger. The more that we implement these traits as we engage with politics, I'm convinced that if we could get the other side to change their minds and de-escalate, it will be because we're acting like Christ, not because we're using the world's tools and acting like the world. So lastly, make sure you take a second to pray for Trump and that God will continue to protect him according to his will and that God will use us in these times to be salt and light in the world. And if you notice, this is an ongoing theme. You don't hear anything from these people that claim that they love the Lord and claim that we supposed to be doing a work for others and reaching the lost and all of that, somehow it all forms to Donald Trump. And I want you to stay, stay with me because I'm gonna show you a video of this right wing pastor that is saying that he healed a guy that was voting democratic from a demon. I want you to see it, it's a longer clip. But so we'll talk just briefly. I'm getting ready to show it to you. So you got to stay and watch this man. I'm going to break it as maybe a four minute clip, but I'm going to try to split it up so you don't have to see the whole thing in its entirety. But I want you to see what is going on where these folks main focus is to where we supposed to be the light, the salt of the earth. We supposed to be making a difference out here. But instead, we've taken and taken people and, and selected groups of people and shamed each types of groups of people and pushed them to the end of society and want to go about enacting our laws and ways and our self-righteousness and impose it on the others and somehow continue to elevate Donald Trump and only worry about him because you know why? You know why? Why is this? Why is it only prayers for him when he's the main one pushing rhetoric around here? Why is it only for him? You know why? Because unfortunately, many of these people have looked at this man as some type of saving grace, of some type of savior. Many still believe that he's this anointed man of God to save America in some kind of way. I remember hearing from a family member that Donald Trump had met with a group of faith leaders and he had become a Christian. And we needed to view him, even though he has this horrible, morally depraved past, um, we need to view him as a King Cyrus. President Trump will be like Cyrus. Trump has the Cyrus anointing. God was raising him up like Cyrus. And, and everybody else is a demon. And that's unfortunate because you have Hagen migrants over there that are here legally that are afraid to come out their house. Little kids that are afraid to go out and play because you got the proud boys running around in the streets and people threatening them and, and their rhetoric continues. And you don't see none of these mainstream pastors that are out there that have a bigger platform saying anything. You don't see none of these major Christian YouTubers saying anything silent, but they wanna continue to elevate Donald Trump. Well, you know what? We call it like it is on this channel and we're not gonna elevate a human or politician or anybody that is above Jesus Christ. We're not gonna elevate nobody like that. But we're gonna show you right now, I'm gonna show you this video of this right wing pastor that's, that is, you can tell, I mean, if anybody goes to this man's church and sit under this type of stuff, it's, you know, and, you know, we, we need, we're going to pray for them because this is what you call extremely lost. And all of the people that are sitting in this event where Dutch Sheets and all of them are hanging out at, they're all lost. Take a listen. I went to a little place in Kentucky and I taught on a Friday night. I think it was a Friday night. And I was talking about the courts of heaven. Well, the next day when we came back Saturday morning, they began to tell me that there had been a man there the night before that was now in the hospital and that had suddenly, for some unforeseen reason, 
had some kind of a condition that had caused his fever to go so high that the doctors were literally afraid it was going to cook his brain. And, that it, and whatever they were trying, nothing was working to bring the fever down. And so they said, well, could you pray? And, and maybe even from a court of heaven perspective. So I began to pray, just kind of actually fumbling around. All of a sudden, another person in attendance at that conference said, I need to tell you something. She said, he said, that man that is in that condition has been a lifelong Democrat. And we have tried to convince him that, that he is in agreement with the spirit of death because of his vote. Do you understand that when you vote, you come into agreement with spirits? You come into an agreement with spirits. So you need to make sure your vote is connecting you to the right thing in the spirit world. So I'm standing there and I'm suddenly realizing his vote has connected him to a spirit of death that is claiming the legal right to take him out. So how many of you know this? We actually, according to 1 John 5, 16, we have a right to come into the courts of heaven and represent things before God. The Bible literally says there that if you see one sinning a sin not unto death, you can ask life and God will give them life. I said, Lord, I'm here in a, under the authority of those that are here. And I come and as I come, I repent in behalf of this man to come into the court of heaven and do these things. So I prayed this prayer and I asked for healing. I am not joking. Five minutes after we finished that prayer, someone that was connected to the situation got the call and said his fever just broke. And the man was spared and he was back at the services the next day. But I want you to hear this. His vote connected him to something in the spirit world that had to be undone. Now, hopefully he repented. Hopefully he's a good, solid Republican now. Now, you hear that? This guy sounds like a, I mean, a fool. I don't know. I don't see how anybody that has listened to the gospel of Jesus Christ, that somebody that has been in the that's been a season that I always say a seasoned believer, somebody that has been part of the faith and that has went to a Bible foundation teaching church over the years. How can you go and sit and be comfortable listening to some nonsense like that? I remember when I first got saved and here in the city and there's a pastor that is extreme and on that and he it, it, somebody invited me to go to this church it was new because it was the popular church in the city uh rob parsley as many of you know and he happened not to be there that sunday but it was a guest speaker this guy still around uh still has a major platform and things at that time but i have newly saved and things but I, you know, I had been around some foundational teachings and things like that. And it didn't take me long, even as a babe in Christ, to realize what is going on here. I was uncomfortable. And I'm like, wait a minute, you see? But I was in tune to the Holy Spirit to be able to know truth from error. And that's what has happened with many of these people. They don't know. They are so deceived at this stage, they can't recognize truth from error at this stage. They, so they'll sit in these types of events and listen to this garbage. They'll come on here and, and, and promote and idolize politicians in such a way to where you think that, oh, okay, that's got to match up with the scriptures some kind of way. Later on, later on here, Marcus Rogers and all of them, they continue to promote that. You don't hear nothing. As I said, prayers for, we're supposed to be praying for everybody. Our enemies, as the, as the scriptures tell us, we supposed to pray for everybody. And why is it only praying for one person? One person because you want your agenda stuffed down people's throats. I mean, this is ridiculous. The church, I mean, this is just such a bad look for the body of Christ. Bad look. It, it looks horrible. And unfortunately, the look that is out there that, that people are seeing from the body of Christ and things like that is a self-righteous look. And people are looking at that and saying, you church folks are the biggest hypocrites out there. You church folks are no good. 
You church folks, who do you think you are? You church folks, I don't want nothing to do with none of your religion. You church folks, stay out of my business. And see, and the wall and the barriers become up more and more, which it makes it more difficult for you and I to preach the gospel message and teach and try to reach the lost but through our witness. So, you know, you just have to continue to go forward because I know the Holy Spirit has the ability to tear them barriers down. But we must continue to stand. We must continue to pray for everybody. We don't get to select who we pray, get to pray for. We're supposed to pray for everybody. Whether you like it or not, I know it's hard at times to be praying. Pray that people repent. Pray that people, you know, turn, that pray for your enemies. Pray for the good times. Pray for it. I mean, I, I try to pray. You know, when someone asks me to pray, I make sure I, I get to it right as, at that time because they've asked me to pray. And if somebody seen enough in me or had enough to reach out to say, you know what? You mind praying for me? You know, I'm going through this or I'm going through that. You know, can you just at least lift me up and things like that? That's serious to me. And it should be serious to you if somebody asks you for prayer. And, you know, so I make sure that that's going to be, I, I, I take care of that. And I keep, and I pray for all of you guys or anybody that comes across the channel. It is whatever. I pray for the entire community, the, the society, the world. Pray for them all. Who do we think we are? I mean, that's what this drives me nuts, that these self-righteous Christians, who do, they, who do we think we are? That we can just forget about praying for certain people. That we can just select who we want to pray for. Select that, you know, be so selective and things like that. Oh, it's so easy, ain't it? It's easy to sit there and hang around with everybody that's yes, 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 and go along with you and, and everyone that's on your team. But one of the hardest things to do is pray for your enemies. Pray for those that are using you. Pray for those that then stabbed you in the back. Pray for those that you don't even like, you know? And so you get these YouTubers and all of these Christians and these people out here that are out there. They can be doing more within their own communities and cities and things like that. Instead, they focus on one man as if this man is God himself and that things cannot go about if this man is not where he needs to be. Well, I got news for you. As long as I've been serving Jesus, I done went through a whole lot of, and many of you, we done went through presidential politics over the years. I've lived some bad, bad times, and many of you have as well. And I've had some great times. And you know what? Guess what? The world continues to go on and the bottom has not fallen out. And I'm still here because God is good and he has promised to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And that's one thing that you don't have to worry about. What's all up with all of this fear and all of this scare tactics and all of this craziness that's going on out there? What's up with Christians with that? It's no different than what's going on from back in the biblical times with the apostles and all of them. Scared to death, not trusting Jesus. What are you scared about? You don't have to rely on people to try to fix everything like that in your life. Just go, just stay focused. Keep your eye on the prize with this Jesus Christ and do not let false Christ, false ministers, false prophets, false apostles, whatever you want to call them, distract you and try to get your eyes off of where you need to go. Stay on track. Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. That's how you should be walking. Following the word of God, walking forward, not being astray and getting off and going down rabbit holes, listening to these conspiracy, conspiracy uh, laden preachers and pastors and will you name it they're all over the internet lying in the lord's name we'll continue to call it out we'll continue to take the devil head on punching right in between the chops evangelism for god is the channel my name is maurice braxton and to the next video my friends take care god bless